there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug, back again with another fountain pen video. Today I'm going to focus on filling systems offered by my favorite fountain pen company, Pen BBS. Those of you that follow me know that I'm just nuts about the pens that this company offers. Those of you from the Pen BBS Facebook group called Taste the Rainbow, well, you're just nuts, aren't you? I see Bjorn, and I see Jan, and I see Andrew, and Chris, and Shariar. Well, I see Shmuel, and Trisha, and Betty, and Cheryl Ann, and Alexandra, and of course I see you. But I digress. Since the arrival of the hotly anticipated Magnetic Piston Filler 492, I thought about doing a shootout between the various filling mechanisms that Pen BBS produces. Other than eyedroppers and cartridge converters, Pen BBS makes five different filling systems. The Piston Filler 309, the Bulk Filler 355, the Vacuum Filler 456, and the Spring Piston Filler 500, and the new Magnetic Piston Filler, the 492. I only have four of these systems, as I don't own a 309, so perhaps those among you who have a 309 can perform the same experiments as I do here and chime in with your $1.50 worth, that's two cents US worth in Canadian. So I'm going to put these four pens head to head and do some very scientific, highly technical experiments and then give you my gut feelings. So enough blah blah blah. No blah blah blah! Let's do this right now. Okay, so how am I going to evaluate these pens? Well, I've drawn up a chart that has each of the models and here we have them stacked in order of newness. This is the latest Pen BBS filling system. This is the Magnetic Piston Filler, the 492, followed by the Pen BBS 500, which is a spring piston filler, followed by the 456, which is a vac fill, and followed by the 355, which is a bulk filler or a syringe type filler. The chart I've made has a number of different categories for evaluation. I'm going to look at what the ink capacity is for each one, how easy the filling system is to operate, how easy it is to maintain, how ergonomic the pen is in your hand, whether it posts, and whether it requires tools or not. Each one of those categories has got some kind of a rating, and uh, I'm going to put up a chart to show you how I've evaluated each one of these pens. And first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in order of um, seniority, which means that we're going to look at the 355 first. I'm going to take it to pieces and show you the filling system and uh, put it back together again for each one of these pens. Then we're going to go ahead and ink up each one of these pens. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. With a little bit of colored water to show how they work. And then I'll come back and do an overall assessment of each pen. Okay, so let's look at the oldest of the four, and that's the 355. This is a bulk filler, and you can consider it like a syringe filler. So the way this filling system works is you unscrew the blind cap, and you bring this rod back, and then you turn the rod into this piston so those little threads will engage with it. And then you push the piston forward, because there's a little snap section in there, put the pen in the ink, and draw it up like a syringe. And then once you've done that, and you've got your chamber filled, you pull back and it clicks again, and you turn that thread so it disengages with that piston again and then keeping your nib in the ink because this will displace some ink as you move it down you push it back down and then close the blind cap the blind cap also has a shutoff and so like piston fillers some piston fillers will have that shutoff that engages with the bottom of the section and so it'll allow the ink to flow you can close off that section from ink flow so you can travel on an aircraft. Air pressure changes won't affect it that much. So let's look at how difficult or how easy it is to disassemble and clean before we actually do a filling demo on it. 
So you remove the blind cap, unscrew it, and then there's a little flatted section of that thread. You can see it right there. And generally you need a wrench, so a tool of some sort to release that. I tend to try to not tighten that when I'm maintaining my pen so that I don't have to use the tool. I can use a little bit of a rubber mat and just give it that extra little turn and that bit comes out. And the whole piston assembly comes out of the pen and you can take the section off and you've got just the barrel to clean the section, the nib of course, nib assembly comes off fairly simply and then you can clean all your parts and you can grease it up at that point as well. Just while I'm here, you show how that bit engages. This is one of the problems of the 355. Those threads engage with that piston right there and if you tighten this too much then it gets stuck and when you try to disengage it later it it turns the entire instead of just turning that it turns the whole thing around inside the barrel and you're screwed basically so the idea is to when you pull this up to engage the piston you give it like a half a turn, just enough to engage a thread or two, and then you give it a push. And it comes apart from that snappy bit, like that. And then you can engage your piston, disengage your piston. But you do need tools to get it apart. So generally what I do to put it back together again I'll engage that piston just a little bit, make sure these pieces are snapped together, push the whole thing into the barrel, and then turn it down by hand, and that's it. Then close up that. Put the section back on. And Bob's your uncle. And now for the 456. The 456 is a vacuum filler and the way it operates you unscrew the blind cap, pull the piston back to the back, dip your nib in the ink, push the piston down and it creates a vacuum behind the piston and then the barrel flares out right here and as it flares out it releases that vacuum sucking ink up through into the barrel. And how easy is it to take this pen apart? Well very similar to the 355 this has a flatted part on that screw thread right there that you have to use a wrench on. Again I only tighten that just slightly and of course I silicone grease that too and then I can usually disassemble it without a tool. And that whole assembly comes out and you can add silicone grease to that, to the, the piston and those O-rings right there. And you can release the section from the barrel and you end up with a barrel with a couple of pieces of metal on it and of course the section with the removable nib assembly. Please pardon my really cruddy o-ring. I'm waiting for parts to come available again on Etsy to replace that o-ring. And to put it back, it's just the reverse. It 
and there we go. And now it is the Pen BBS 500. The 500 is a spring piston filler. And the way it works is you release this little button on the back with a little bit of thumb pressure. Very easy to do. You pull out the rod and then turn the rod in the opposite direction and it engages the piston inside just like the 355 does. And then you can push that spring down and that piston goes up and down. You put the pen in the ink and you pump it up and down. It fills with ink. The way it comes apart, do you need tools? No. Just a little bit of pressure, just even with your fingers, and I've even got silicone grease on my fingers, and that end section comes off, and you pull the spring mechanism out, and you can grease that up as you see fit, and the section comes off. So you can grease up that O-ring, and you end up with a barrel that has no metal on it whatsoever. Easy for cleaning. And how does it go back together again? You may well ask, and while well you may, inquiring minds want to know. Will Princess Caroline's pregnancy save her shaky marriage? Inquiring minds want to know. I want to know. Put the piston back in. Screw that down hand tight. Turn the little piston rod the reverse direction and then screw it down. Et voila, c'est ça, c'est tout. C'est si bon de partir n'importe où. And next we have the piece of resistance, la pièce de résistance, the Pen BBS 492 magnetic filler. Now I've just reviewed this pen but let's go over the process again. You move the cap. The cap has the magnet in it. And I put a little polish cloth around that cap so it doesn't scratch. Now I'll give it a little bit of a turn like this. You can see that magnet turning around inside there just to release any kind of stickiness. And then we can withdraw the magnet. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 And then you can slide the magnet. You put the pen in the ink and slide the piston back and it fills and it fills with a lot of ink. And I'm gonna take the opportunity here because I've worked with this pen now for a few days where it was just new to me before that I do have some difficulties with getting that piston started. It's moving now because as you can see, I put a lot of silicone grease in there. But even when I greased up that little O-ring quite a bit, and gave it that turn and things like that, it still would get stuck and have difficulty moving up and down. So what I've found is that you can take your little cloth to protect the cap and stick it to the end and rotate the pen and that little plug comes out and then I can drop some silicone grease in there and or give the piston a little bit of a push and then the reverse. And of course that's part of the disassembly of this pen too. You can remove the section. By removing the section you can give that piston a push this way and then you can remove that little end screw. There we go. You can move that 
piston all the way out for cleaning which is what I did when I was getting ready to do this video because I took all the parts off and I end up with a completely metal free barrel that I can clean out in this case I'm going to make sure it has lots of silicone grease in it because that piston is starting to become a PITA can I tell you when you're being a pain in the ass? Which you are! And that is going to figure in my evaluations. So I'm going to put that back in. Put this back on. There we go. Put this section back on the pen. Put the cap back on. Mr. OCD, I can line them up. Et voila. Not as easy as it looks. Okay, now it's time to fill each one of these pens and see how their filling mechanism works. And then I will talk about my evaluation of each. We're going to start with the 355 and some very, very diluted Yamabuto. So this is not truth in advertising here. Yamabuto is much darker than that. So with the syringe or bulk filler, we're going to move that back. Screw it just a little bit into there. Make sure it's always seated in the back. Give it a push. And we go into the water and we pull up. And we pull up slowly because of cavitation. Now, you can also give it another push and it will push any air that's in the section and you'll see those bubbles. You know that you pushed out some air, just like that. And you get as much of a fill as is possible. We wipe off the nib. This is where it gets a little bit tricky with this pen. You have to turn that rod back again the other way so it releases it. Make sure you pull it back so it clicks. And then with the pen over the ink, push that rod back down because as you can see, those drips of ink would come out of the nib. And then you can screw that down. It's a bit of a learning curve on this pen, that filling system, but you do get a lot of ink. This is, I measured this out earlier, and this is 2.25 milliliters of ink in that fill. Now let's go for the 456, the vac filler, over the blind cap, pull the rod back, dip the nib in the ink, and we go a little bit closer. And you can see the ink fill up. Now here's a trick with some um, vac fillers. Some people do this on their Viscontis. If you're brave, you can pull that piston back down again. Push the air back out of the nib. I don't go all the way up. I just go up to the boat, the section. Because then it gets dangerous after that. Without letting that piston go back, put it back in the ink and push down again. And 
and you see there how much of a fill I got out of that. In fact, I'm going to measure this right now because that was much better fill than I ever got in my tests. I'm going to revise my numbers. Okay, I measured that out. That was a really good fill. That was one and three quarter milliliters of ink. And previously I had measured one and one quarter of ink. So doing it the second time by pushing it up, I got a whole half, a whole half a milliliter of ink more by pushing that air out. Okay, let's go for the 500. This is the spring piston. Unscrew the rod, turn it the opposite way, get that piston working. You see there's lots of bubbling in there. And you let the spring back. I found that like an aerometric filler, if you just keep squeezing it, eventually you get all of the air out of there and you get the most ink in your pen as you can. And then you turn it the opposite way, close it up, and you're done. Very, very simple, easy, easy to operate with no real fiddly bits. Uh, some people have difficulty with getting that open, but I put a little sticker on mine and it improves the traction on there. So you can open that up. And let's go with the, the sexy new mag filler. And let's see whether it works. So we unscrew the cap. I'm going to wrap the cap in my polished cloth. I'm going to dip it in the ink. And get the piston down first. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, I'm starting to think that part of the operation of this pen is to take that plug out because there's air suction. When that piston goes down, there's no air getting through there. Since there was no instruction manual with this, it's hard to know whether that's their intention, but it certainly works a lot better when that rear plug is out. So I'm going to assume that's the case. Um, I'm still not happy with how this piston is now not operating for me, but let's dip it in the ink. The other thing about this is that if you have a little bit of ink, how do you, when it's that far into your ink well, how do you get at that piston? Well, the magnet doesn't work that deep, so you need a deep ink well to be able to get that section all the way in to the ink. That's a really good fill now. As you can see, my beloved 492 is now a little bit more of a PITA here with uh, that piston not performing well. Now, it might be operator error, but since there's no instructions, how are you supposed to know how to operate it? But I got a lot of ink out of that, and the uh, 492 takes 2.75 milliliters of ink. This actually might be a little bit more than I got before. It might be close to three. I don't know whether I mentioned it or not, but the 500 took 1.5 milliliters of ink. So there are our four filling systems. And now we're going to talk about my evaluation of each of these four. Okay, the first one up is the 355. 
It is the bulk filler. Its capacity is two and a quarter milliliters, which gives it a capacity score of three out of four. And in terms of ease of filling, I gave it uh, two and a half. The scoring here is zero for fail, one for poor, two for pass, three for good, and four for excellent. I said just above a pass because it's got some issues in terms of a learning curve, um, trying to figure out how to get that thread into the piston without it sticking. Uh, once you got the technique down, it's fine. Uh, but I have heard that people have some longevity issues with this pen in that the threads wear down and you can't get it into that to engage with that piston anymore. So uh, they've turned theirs into eyedroppers. So two and a half out of four for ease of filling. Ease of cleaning, same thing. Two and a half, it's got a lot of parts to it. Um, it's um, difficult to uh, get the pieces back together again. Um, and because of that, uh, that piston rod issue, I think uh, it gets an ease of cleaning of two and a half. In terms of ergonomics, I like this pen in the hand when it's not posted. Um, and it feels very similar to the Pen BBS 500 to me. Uh, in fact, I like the section better on this pen than I do on the 500. The pen does have a shut off, so uh, that's a plus. You get a plus one for that. It does not post in my estimation. I don't think you can write with it when it's posted. And so it gets a minus one, a no for that, and a no with no tools. You can't open it up without tools. So there's a minus one there. In terms of the score, that's 11 for the 355. And the yes, no scores is a total of minus one for a total score of 10, giving it a rank of four in these pens. And the 456, a vacuum filler, capacity of one and three quarter milliliters, gives it a score of two. Ease of filling, I would say three and a half because uh, it's really simple um, and takes seconds. Uh, to get a full fill, you need to sort of do a little bit of wrangling with your pen and uh, live a little bit dangerously. Lana. 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 Lana! What? <laughs> Danger zone. Uh, but it is possible to get uh, that full one and three quarter milliliters of ink. In terms of ease of cleaning, um, because the, that uh, vacuum piston works so well, you can clean this pen without actually taking it apart. In terms of ergonomics, this is the most comfortable pen of these four in my hand. It does have a shut off, so that's a plus one. It does post and it posts nicely, and that's another plus one. Uh, but you do have to use tools to take it apart to maintain it. So that's a, a minus there. So the total score is 12 and a half plus minus scores are a plus one for a total score of 13.5, giving it a rank of one among these four pens. So the 500. The 500 is a spring piston filler. It has a capacity of one and a half milliliters of ink. And so therefore it gets a capacity score of one, which is the lowest. Then in terms of ease of filling, I think this is the easiest of the four pens. It's just really, really simple. And you just push on that spring and just, just keep pushing it until all the air goes out. You get a, a really good fill of ink and then that rod disappears. It's just as easy as pie. Same thing for ease of cleaning because you can pump that, that piston with the spring in and out really, really quickly, you can, if you're using the same ink, uh, clean this pen out in a glass of water pretty quickly. In terms of ergonomics, I think it feels exactly the same to my hand as the uh, 355 does. It feels very, very similar to that pen. Um, it does not have a shut off, so that's a minus one. It does not post, and so that's a minus one but you can take it apart to clean it out and maintain it. It doesn't require tools. I gave it a yes there for no tools, and then it gets a plus one. So the 500, 
gets a total score of 12 and a plus minus score of minus one for a total score of 11, ranking it number three in these four pens. And now we have the 492. The 492 is the magnetic piston filler. It has a capacity of two and three quarter milliliters of ink, the highest capacity, and so it gets a four there. The ease of filling, uh, I marked this down. I had it higher than this, but I've had difficulty even doing this demonstration video with this pen and that piston, as you saw in the previous part of this video. So there are issues with that ease of filling. Ease of cleaning, that rear plug is not the easiest thing to get out. I've discovered that if you grease it up and you don't tighten it right down, that it comes out fairly easily. But to get it out the first time was a bit of a chore. So I'm gonna give it a three there. In terms of ergonomics, this is a terrific pen in the hand. Um, it just is so well balanced and I'm just enjoying writing with it so much uh, that I had to give it a 3.5. It still isn't as nice in the hand as the 456 is, but it is right up there has no shut off, so you do worry about it if you have air pressure changes. Um, it does post, but not really well. Um, I vacillated about giving this a no here, but it does actually post and you can actually write with it. It's just really awkward. And it doesn't require tools, and so it gets another plus there. So in total, it gets 13 with a yes no score of minus one for a total of 12. Bring it in at number two. Who does number two work for? To my surprise, in my shootout, the Penn BBS 456 wins the game. I was very surprised. I really thought that the new mag filler would win this contest hands down. But it shows you when you use scientific empirical logic that it really does uh, trump any personal feelings. And of course, I love my 456. So I've really enjoyed doing this uh, project. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to be informed when there's another posted video. And that just leaves it for me to say, Thank you for watching, and that's all she wrote.